So let's look at the following example in which we're going to calculate the net electric field at a given point due to two other stationary point charges. So before we begin, let's recall the principle of superposition for electric fields. The principle of superposition for electric fields basically states that if there are several point charges in some given region of space, then the electric field at any point is the vector sum of the electric fields due to all the other charges and this is because electric field just like force is a vector so we're going to apply this principle in this example let's begin two point charges are placed along a straight line a distance of 20 centimeters apart as shown in the following diagram so we have stationary point charge one with a charge of negative 10 microcoulombs and stationary point charge number two with a charge of positive 28 microcoulombs so in part a calculate the electric field at point a where point a is a distance five centimeters from point charge charge number one and 15 centimeters from point charge number two and in part B if an electron is placed at point A what will be its acceleration as a result of that net electric field so in part B we're going to use the following two constants the mass of the electron is given by this quantity and the charge of an electron is given by that quantity so let's begin with part A so to calculate the net electric field, we have to determine all the electric fields acting at point A as a result of the other point charges. So we have two point charges, so that means we have to worry about two electric fields. One as a result of this point charge, and a second one as a result of this point charge. So let's begin with this point charge. This point charge is a positive charge. That means the electric field that it creates will point away from this point charge. And that means along this axis, it will point in the negative direction along the x axis. Now let's examine this point charge. At point A, the electric field that this charge creates will point towards that negative point charge. And once again, that means it will point in the negative direction along the x-axis. So, these two electric fields will point in the same exact direction. Let's call this field as a result of this point charge E2 and this one, let's call that E1. Now let's choose going that way to be the positive direction along the x-axis. So that means the net electric field is equal to E1 plus E2 because they point in the same direction. Now the formula for electric field is KR constant constant multiplied by the charge divided by the distance between the two points squared. So E1 becomes K multiplied by charge Q1 divided by the distance from this A to this point charge. And that is squared. Now this quantity becomes K multiplied by Q2, this quantity divided by D2A squared, where D2A is simply the distance from point A to point charge number two. So, let's actually plug in our quantities. The value of K is 8.99 times 10 to the 9 newtons multiplied by meter squared divided by coulomb squared. So the Ks become this quantity. Now Q1 and Q2 are given in microcoulombs. So to convert from microcoulombs to coulombs, we have to multiply both quantities by 1 times 10 to the negative 6. And that's exactly what we do. So Q1 becomes 10 multiplied by 1 times 10 to negative 6 and Q2 becomes 28 multiplied by 10 to negative 6. Now this value is 0.05 meters squared and this value becomes 0.15 meters squared because we have to convert from centimeters to meters. We simply divide both quantities by 100. So we calculate these two quantities, we get these values, add them up, and the magnitude of our electric field at point A is given to be 4.72 times 10 to the 7 newtons per coulomb. And our direction is, well, it's pointing to the left because both of these vectors point in the same exact direction. So this magnitude 
pointing to the left. So let's move on to part B. If an electron is placed at point A, what will be its acceleration? So we take a single electron, we place that electron at point A, that electron will feel a force as a result of that net electric field that we calculated in part A. So to find that, we have to use this equation. The net force acting at this point is equal to Q, the charge of that single electron, multiplied by the net electric electric field that we found in part A. Now we know according to the second law of motion that is equal to mass of the electron multiplied by its acceleration. So we take this equation, rearrange it and solve for A. A is equal to the charge of our electron QE multiplied by the net electric field found in part A divided by the mass of our electron. The mass of the electron is given to be 9.5 0.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. The charge of our electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs and we have our electric field found from part A to be this quantity. So we multiply these two divide and we get about 8.29 times 10 to the 18 meters per second squared is our acceleration. Now, in which direction will that point? Well, because the electric field points in this direction to the left, that implies our electron will travel in the opposite direction to the right. Now, another way we can see that is if we place a negative charge here, it will want to move away from this negative charge and it will want to move towards a positive charge. So our electron will travel in this direction. So that means this is the magnitude of acceleration and our direction is to the right along the x-axis.